Today we've got a crazy malicious compliance story involving using bleach. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, you have to pay at this machine. It legitimately pains me to write this one because I love this barber shop. My barber shop. I go here all the time along with my sons. Always great haircuts. Always. Today's malicious compliance has to do with trying to simply pay the bill. One gentleman gave me my recently updated cable from Deadpool 2 undercut, great as usual. My son got his crazy 16 year old cut. His cut took a lot longer, like three more people got their cut, than mine, so I waited until both of its were done to pay. Then it was time to pay as my son walked towards me. I checked his cut out with cash in hand as I heard a man yelling, Sir, sir, hey you need to freaking pay. Okay. I started to walk towards him with my clearly visible cash, but he wasn't looking at me. He said, you can't not pay, you come over here and pay right now. I tried handing him cash. He slapped it out of my hand, like assault slapped my hand so hard two of the bills fell out. Then he said, you need to pay at this machine, slapping his hand hard on the machine. I was pissed at this point and embarrassed because I could feel the awkwardness in the air. Enter malicious compliance. I was livid. According to a forgotten comedian, that's four degrees past pissed. I decided, hand still stinging, I'm choosing today to stick up for myself. I slapped my money the way he slapped my hand directly on his machine. I kept picking the machine up, scanner, to look for a hole to put my cash into. I tried flattening it, bending it, folding it, whatever it took to shove this money into the machine. I really hammed it up, a la OJ Simpson sticking his tongue out trying to put a glove on. Then it finally happened. The man finally lost his mind. Why didn't you tell me it was cash? Why? Why? I could have argued. I just stood there staring, knowing he would spin himself into a tizzy. He totally did, but not in the way I could have expected. He ripped my money through it in the air, yelled and walked away pushing barber's chairs that other people were sitting in. Everyone was yelling back at him. It would have been more entertaining if I wasn't worried this dude was going to end in handcuffs by day's end. I didn't stay around to find out. And yeah, both barbers got an $8 tip. They have to sweep it up now though. To those who will most assuredly ask, I've decided not to press charges as of yet. I really have no intention of doing so. I really have no idea if I'm going back. Maybe I'll make a joke of it, waving my cash in the air upon entry. The other barbers there really didn't seem to react in a way that indicated this was anything new. Update, how the turntables. So I go back and forth about what to do because we've been coming to this barber exclusively for the last 8 months or so, minus an occasional touch up here and there at Great Clips, I know. I decided to call and well I don't know what I was going to say or even start. Luckily I didn't have to say much. As soon as the barber answered, not the angry one, he was all apologies, profusely apologizing. Ever since Oma passed, our father had not been the same and we've talked about this with him. We've talked about this with him. He added a bunch of other age-related excuses that garnered my sympathy and made me look at things in a new light. Well, the light's been shining the whole time. I just had my eyes opened, I suppose. I should have seen the clues. He took five times as long, easily, as everybody else. They have his chair way back in the corner away from the front window. There were signs I clearly ignored. Being an aged individual myself, I didn't want to pigeonhole this guy based on his salt and pepper hair, but I should have taken a step back instead of clapping back at a 60 plus year old. I'm definitely chalking this one up as a mulligan for both of us. I think OP really overcompromised in their update, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, regardless of whether or not this guy has things going on, you can't act like that in your business. You can't go around slapping people because things in your life aren't great. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, roller shutters are not clean? Okay, I'll do it. This was a few years back when I was working in a pet store. The pet store has four roller shutters, two at the back and two at the front. So one day my manager told me to use a cloth and clean the roller shutters, front and back, before we opened the store for business. There was never enough time to clean all the roller shutters before we opened the store. Bear in mind that I arrived at the store at 7am to clean the cages, feed the animals, brush the cats, and dogs to be well pressed to potential customers. 
clean the glass partitions, mop and sweep the floor, restock and manage the cash register. The store opens at 8.30 a.m. and I barely made it in time every day. We only have three staff at this time. So as I quickly finished all my morning tasks, I use a damp cloth to wipe the roller shutters in back and forth sweeps like lightning fast, just to make it in time for the opening. The manager had the audacity to scold and point at the roller shutter for not cleaning it before opening. This is where I cue my malicious compliance. You want me to clean the roller shutters? Okay, fine. I pulled back the roller shutters down and proceed to the cleaning, inch by inch until it was squeaky clean. In between the cleaning, I had to wash the cloth several times to make sure that the water was clear. While I was cleaning, the store was filled with customers. I was nowhere to be found because I was at the back cleaning the roller shutters and blocked from everyone's sight. The line to the cash register was the longest I've ever seen. It took me a good two hours just to clean the back side. Oh, I wasn't done. I proceeded to clean the front roller shutters as well, pulling it down to clean it, blocking the entrance, preventing customers from entering and exiting the store. The customers inside the store had to exit from the back, and potential customers thought that the store was closed for the day. I took my sweet time, about two hours, to clean the front side, inch by inch. By the time I reopened the front shutters, the money made on that day was down by half. It wasn't my fault. You got mad at me for not cleaning the roller shutters. I just followed what you wanted. It was the best day of my life because I'm sick of serving the customers every day. I had worked there for three years until I had enough. I had done so many malicious compliances that even till this day, I chuckled myself to sleep when I thought of it. Yeah, sometimes you need the money when you work at places like this, but at some point when you're so minimized and maximized as far as staff and tasks, there are very quickly becomes a breaking point where you say, this is enough, I'm gonna go work at McDonald's over something like this. Our next story is victim of my own, absolutely under no exception, policy. In my company, the employees have the habit of changing the specs of the jobs without asking approval of the client or the boss, me, like changing the material because they think it's better this way. The customer doesn't really know what they want. This led to many partial or full refunds to customers, plus bad reviews on Google because asked A, got B. At the nth partial refund, I wrote an angry email to everyone. From today, everyone must follow the original order form to the letter, no changes, with absolutely no exception. If customer asks A, even if it is clearly wrong, it's not allowed to silently change to B. The day after, a new customer asked A, which did not fit the media. I explained by email that A does not fit, so I'll change it with B. They replied, perfect, thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't know the difference. Just googled the specs. So I updated the order form. Enter Daniel the smart bot. He knows that in Italy, employees cannot be billed for mistakes, even if intentional, and cannot be fired on a whim or a small mistake. So he thought he would be funny to follow my instruction to the letter and intentionally made the order with the original wrong specs. Must follow the original order to the letter. No changes under no circumstances. With absolutely no exception, he said, smiling. And for the N plus first time, I had to issue a partial refund to the customer. You know, I'd go out of my way to point out to OP that they put first time instead of first time. But I'd also want to just follow their original form to the letter, no changes with absolutely no exception. This next story is, order a basic door, pay for a fancy one. I work as an engineer at a sauna company. We have many different sauna doors. One salesperson writes to me to get a door with special measurements. The door in question is a rather fancier door with fancy wooden trimmings on polished aluminum and frosted glass. Except, the customer doesn't want the fancy stuff. I first draw one of the less fancy doors that is exactly to the specification of the customer. Well, that is not good enough. I get a request to change it to the fancier model and remove the fancy stuff. This will make no difference. I literally just change the name on the drawing to the fancier name. I do no other changes. The customer is satisfied and puts in the order. That of course means that the customer pays the more expensive price. It's like ordering a cheeseburger and removing the cheese and still paying extra for the cheeseburger. Just that this time it was a $150 upcharge. I mean, hey, the customer's always right. 
If you want to order a Big Mac but take out the extra patties, buns, and replace the sauce with just ketchup and mustard, by all means have your cheeseburger Big Mac. This next story is, you want to pay extra for less time? I work at a pawn shop. The loans are 60 days with a 30 day grace period, so 90 initially. Renewals get you 60 days from the date of renewal, it's not tacked on to the end date. We even work with people if they need extra time. This customer is also a regular, so she knows how all this works and likes us. The customer is going on vacation middle of June and should be back by the end of June, but there's a chance she might be delayed and go past the due date. Her loan is due July 7th. She's stressed that there's some chance she might not be back by the due date. She just insists that she needs to renew to get enough time, but can't give me any idea what date or anything on what would work. Just the current due date isn't enough. Renewing it gives her less time. July 3rd. Well, she can definitely be back by then. I try to explain she has more time already. Maybe she thought it was due June? Which doesn't make sense since she leaves after that date, but maybe still confused. Nope. She understands it's July, but she needs to renew to make sure she has time. Try to also explain that I can give her a few more days if she needs it. Nope. Can't get over the stereotype that pawn shops want your crap and will jump on taking it the day after. I turn my monitor to show a calendar. Maybe a visual will help. Nope. Current due date doesn't work for her, but renewing it will. Alright, you want to pay for a renewal and have until July 3rd? Yes? Fine. When I handed her the contract, she asks the due date. Phew, I'll definitely be back by the second. So now I have enough time. Head desk? This is also the first time she said anything definitive about her return date, too. Enjoy paying twice your loan. I spent 30 minutes trying to help her to not spend extra money. Opie did everything they could not to maliciously comply. I mean, I don't think you can even refer to this as malicious compliance. This is like painfully reluctant compliance. This next story is, I was a Halloween Scrooge, but malicious compliance landed me the best costume. So I really am not a group participation type, and I especially hate having to participate. So when my office decided to do a group Halloween costume, I was like, absolutely not. It's required, and we're all going to be milkshakes. We were all supposed to wear a little whipped cream and cherry fascinator and dress as our favorite flavor of milkshake. I hate milkshakes. I hate stupid kitschy costumes. I said if y'all are forcing me to be a part of this, I'm going to have to fix your idea. My wonderful coworker made a lactate shirt for me. Nobody coming into the store even understood what the rest of the girls were supposed to be dressed as. But everyone got a laugh at my lactate shirt after hearing the explanation. I mean, hey, it works, right? If you're going to dress up as a food item, you probably don't want to dress up as something that can be so divisive depending on the genes you have, whether or not you can even handle it. This next story is, use less bleach. Okay. This is an old story. I was a warehouse associate slash delivery driver and was responsible for cleaning the warehouse restrooms one day a week. I would use a cleaner with bleach because that's what we were given. Then I'd mop the floors with bleach water. A lady working in the office area always complained about the bleach smell. Trying to be courteous, I diluted the cleaners I was using, but that wasn't good enough. The complaints got worse and worse. The boss was getting irritated with me. I was barely using any cleaner at this point, and I got an idea. Without telling anyone, I rinsed an empty spray bottle a few days in advance and filled it with pure water only. The mop got a fresh head and the bucket was rinsed. My cleaning day came and I began to go through my cleaning process with nothing but water. Office lady starts gagging, coughing and complaining. Boss flies through the warehouse door in a fit and says, how many times do we have to tell you to use less bleach? This is ridiculous. I agreed with him that it was in fact ridiculous and told him I didn't even use any bleach or even any cleaner at all that day. I never got any apologies or anything, and occasionally she'd still gripe about the smell, but she ended up leaving the company a few weeks later. Pretty much everyone was chill at that job, and that's really the only issue I ever had there. Now, I don't know if this is going too far, but like, I would want to like bring my own extra spray bottle with me and be like, you know what, this is ridiculous, and just start like spraying some into my mouth. I'm not even using any chemicals. 
Like, maybe then you would actually get some kind of apology or acknowledgement. That lady is crazy. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.